uh, the Windows 10 installation, that is the uh, PVR backend feeding live TV to the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Um, it is running on what was originally my home theater PC box. Um, that box was running Windows 7 with Windows Media Center. Um, if you have installed or have a computer with Windows 8 or 8.1 installed or you have Windows 10 now um, and you happen to pop in a DVD into that uh, computer, you'll quickly find out that uh, Microsoft has removed the ability well they've, uh, for, those, for the OS to play back those DVDs. What has happened is they've uh, taken away the codec um, that can decode the video um, from the uh, from those DVDs, the MPEG-2 video. Um, so, in order for you to be able to watch live TV or to t just test your settings um, on this computer, you're going to want to get a codec pack um, installed. So that'll handle the decoding of the video. Um, now, what I used was uh, the Media Player Codec Pack uh, from MediaPlayerCodecPack.com. And uh, you'll just have to be careful when you are um, downloading things such as this. There are, are this particular um, codec pack you know, was no, not a problem, but sometimes there are unscrupulous um, websites out there that will um, dish out to you malware or viruses or trojans, and so you just need to be careful about you know, what you download from the internet. Um, like I said, this particular codec pack worked out well for me and uh, the only thing yeah, I had to be careful of during the installation was is at one point it'll ask do you want to do a custom or an advanced install or um, the express install which will install uh, some extra software. You'll want to choose that custom or um, uh, the custom or advanced installation method and then there will be a checkbox that comes up it's pre-checked you'll want to uncheck that checkbox and that way you won't get the the extra software installed along with the codecs that you're wanting. So once you install these, uh, this codec pack, you will then have the FFD show, direct show video codec, lab video decoder, as well as audio um, decoders. Um, it also comes with Media Player Classic Home Cinema, and um, that's a nice little um, media player. has the look and feel of the, the classic Windows Media Player. And uh, so once you get that installed, you can then head on over to uh, the uh, Next PVR website, which is at nextpvr.com. And once at this site, you'll click on this download link, which will take you to their forums, where there is a link to the executable to install Next PVR. Next PVR is the, um, the software and uh, server software as well that will interface with the TV tuner cards uh, in order to um, feed live TV as well as to um, schedule recordings um, for us. So you want to download Next PVR and install that. Um, the other thing you might want to do is, uh, is sign up for a, a membership with Schedules Direct. And you can just go to schedulesdirect.org uh, they have a free seven-day trial, um, and then after that you can um, extend your membership for two months for $6 or uh, sign up for an annual membership of $25. Uh, I, after I got everything all set up and working, I came back in here and just did the annual $25 membership. It's, you know, so it's $2 a month, it's, so that's not a lot of money there. Uh, but basically, this will provide you with the information for your electronic programming guide so that you can see what's coming up and you can also schedule your season pass recordings um, for your different shows. So once you've installed uh, Next PVR, um, you will be greeted with uh, this interface. I believe the settings uh, window is originally what's on top and you'll want to come down to your devices tab here and you'll see the uh, different um, tuner devices that are available and you can see here I have a um, two ATSC uh, two TV tuners um, and uh, which 
you will want to do is select one and go into device setup. And I've already set up mine, but um, basically I didn't mess with any of the stuff here in the upper portion of the configuration. I just came straight down here and clicked on this scan button. And what that do is what that will do is it'll open up an interface um, where your TV tuner card will be interface with your antenna and begin to scan for what channels that it can find and and read. And in my case, I was able to find quite a few channels. Some of them I knew that you know I I don't reliably receive. Uh, so like I was it was listing like WITN seven, which is out of Greenville, North Carolina, and that's just it's too far away. Um, I tried watching it, but it was just very, very pixelated, very jumpy, um, stuttered and stop type thing. So I, that's just something that I'm not reliably receiving. I'm sure you'll have some of those as well. But uh, when you do the scan, you can uncheck the channels that you know are not going to work for you. And so then when you uh, finish up, it'll only bring in the channels here that um, are uh, reliable or that you've set a reliable. You'll then come over to your second tuner or however many tuners you have and then you'll go and click on device up and once you've configured the first one um, it'll bring up a pop-up and say do you want to apply the settings from the first tuner to the second tuner and I said yes therefore I didn't have to, s have to scan uh, for channels a second time. You'll then want to go to the second or to the channels uh, tab um, and that will then show all of the channels that you uh, set up or, or that you were able to receive during the scanning process and what you want to do is you want to set them up for your electronic programming guide. This is where your schedules direct um, subscription comes into play. So you'll come into each one of these and that it's, it is kind of a, a manual process um, which is a little unfortunate but um, you'll see what I mean. Uh, so a schedule you'll come in to You'll click on the channel that you want to configure, um, and for the source, uh, it will uh, first be on, I think, DVB ATSC EPG, which means it'll just get whatever information is being provided over the air, which is generally the information for um, the current day. Uh, so that that's not very helpful for looking ahead and for doing your uh, scheduling of uh, like your season pass. So uh, you'll choose schedules direct um, and then you won't have had anything set up so you'll be nothing in this lineup uh, selection you'll just choose manage lineups. What that'll do is it'll bring up a, a dialogue where you can enter in your schedules direct username and password, um, enter in your zip code, and then it'll go out to Schedules Direct and pull in all the different programming guides that are available uh, depending upon what, um, I guess, what type of uh, um, TV source material, material you're dealing with. I'm dealing with the over-the-air broadcast, so I choose local over-the-air broadcast there. Um, and then what you're going to do is, is it'll pull in um, that local over-the-air broadcast uh, schedule and you'll need to then map uh, this uh, tuner channel to the schedule schedules direct um, listing and so in the case of uh, the 4.1 which is PBS it will already set have it mapped to 4.1 problem comes in when it's uh, 4.2 um, it will again have you'll, you'll choose schedules direct it'll automatically choose local over the air broadcast but then it'll say mapping 4.1 even though you're on 4.2 so you'll have to come in and choose 4.2 from the list um, and I found that that was the case for each one of these so for 5.1 it was already set to 5.1 but for 5.2 it was still set on 5.1 I had to go to manually change it to 5.2 so you do that for each one of these set them to schedules direct and once you've um, set up the electronic programming guide uh, information for each one of the channels, you'll come down here to this button and you'll choose, click on it, and that will update the electronic programming guide uh, database. And basically what it's going to do is hit schedules direct with the channels you have and what you've mapped them to and get the information um, for those channels. Under the recording tab, you will uh, set up your default 
um, recording directory. If you remember from the, the NVIDIA Shield um, Android TV, when I was setting up a recording for a show from there, I, it asked what was where the recording would go to, and it had default there. This is where you're setting that up. This is where default uh, is defined. Uh, so you'll set that up in in this under this tab. Under media folders, I, I didn't mess with that at all. Decoders is where you will set up uh, how video will be rendered, how audio will be rendered, um, what decoders you'll use. So you can see here, this is where the FFD show video decoder came into play, so that I can actually see the TV show that is being displayed. Um, and again, I do believe that this this is only necessary for stuff you want to do on the TV. On the NVIDIA Shield uh, Android TV, it has decoders to handle the stream um, that's coming down to it from the server piece of this, of the next PVR. Um, so after that, uh, one of the things you'll notice is that the buffer directory is just C temp. Um, you'll want to go and check on your um, uh, C drive to make sure that there is a folder temp there. In my case, there wasn't, and so you'll just set up the temp folder there. And I don't do DVDs on here. Under Clients tab, um, Enable Web Server, that was already checked. Um, the port for that server is going to be 8866 by default. Um, if you wanted to administrate it, um, you'll want to set up a password that you know. Um, and then down here under XBMC and Touch Clients, this is where um, Cody comes into play. Um, so you'll want to check this but um, checkbox here, allow remote access so that Cody can communicate with um, the server piece of the software. Um, then when you're done with this, um, you'll come in to, you'll, you'll say OK, it'll um, record your, um, your selections and you'll come in to your start and under the next PVR folder you will find under next PVR here you will find uh, start MPVR service. So you'll click on that and then what I did was I rebooted the machine and what that um, ensured was that when I came back in I was able to click here and right click on the next PVR that's in the system tray there and say show status and I could see oh, okay my TV tuner devices are being seen. So then you can come into next PVR and go to guide and you can see here's our uh, electronic programming guide that's coming from our schedules direct subscription. Um, we can then also see our recordings that we have set up so you can see that um, we have two recordings that have occurred. Um, they're ready for us to watch. Um, we have an upcoming recording here. Uh, it's tomorrow night. And you can see what your recurring recordings are. And all of this will get uh, sent down to the um, Kodi installation on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV through the next PVR plugin that's there. You can also uh, search in the uh, next PVR software for your upcoming shows. Um, so if I chose B, come in here and you see, oh, that's where Bachelor in Paradise was. And let's say we were looking for something else. Um, I can choose something like maybe uh, Bones. You can see, okay, well, there's some upcoming episodes of Bones like that. I'm going to say I want to record. And it'll come up with the recording dialog here and you can say choose to record once or maybe you're interested in the Bones uh, TV series and you want the season pass so I'm going to record season new episodes on this channel then you can pre-pad you know I'd say two minutes start with two minutes before the show um, and post padding I want it to record for up to two minutes after the show and the directory it's going to go to is the default which we defined in our settings I want to keep all recordings um, and then we would say, okay, if we wanted to keep this, I'm going to cancel that. So that's uh, another way in which you can schedule 
uh, your software or your um, your your series recordings. Um, another thing I would probably want to show you is um, if we come to if you remember I, I was talking about a uh, website during the settings. Um, if you go to the IP address of the computer that has the installation of NextPVR and go to port 8866, you will see that it brings up the NextPVR um, programming guide. And so you can do that this from any computer on your network. And you'll be able to see what's coming up. You can also manage your recordings from here. So it'll show you what your recording, recurring recordings are. It'll show us how we have uh, some available recordings that we can watch, and we have a pending recording coming up. Now, one thing uh, on Windows 10, anyway, uh, it automatically um, uh, set up the firewall and turned it on. So you will probably want to make sure that your firewall is turned off. Otherwise, the um, that ne next PVR programming guide website here or web page, as well as Kodi um, on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV, will not be able to communicate with the server uh, software uh, from next PVR uh, because it will reside behind the firewall. So you will have to turn off the Windows firewall in order for that stuff to be accessed. And um, I mean, I have a firewall at the router. And I don't open up any ports there at the router, so everything's behind my router, so I'm not really too concerned about any problems with turning off the Windows firewall here on the uh, PVR backend computer. So uh, hopefully that will help anybody who's interested in having Next PVR as their um, backend for a Kodi uh, installation, whether that's on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV or on some other device.